ప్రార్థన పరిశుద్ధమైన ప్రేమ గల పరలోకం అందున మా తండ్రి నీ పాదంలో స్తోత్రములు వందనాలు చెల్లిస్తున్న ప్రభు తండ్రి ఈ యొక్క వెడ్నెస్ డే బైబుల్ స్టడీ లో ప్రభు పాల్గొంటకు ప్రభు నువ్వు మమ్మల్ని దీవించి నీ కృప చూపించినందుకు వందనాలు చెల్లిస్తున్నాం ప్రభ గొప్ప దేవ గడిచిన వెడ్నెస్ డే నుంచి ఈ వెడ్నెస్ డే వరకు ప్రభ బైబుల్ స్టడీ అంతట్లో మాకు తోడైనందులకు నీకు వందనాలు స్తోత్రాలు ప్రభ కృపగా కృపగల దేవ నాయన ఎంతో మంది దినం చూడలేదు నాయన కానీ మమ్మల్ని సజీవ లెక్కలో ఉంచినందుకు నీకు వేలాది స్తోత్రములు వందనాలు చెల్లిస్తున్నాం తండ్రి గొప్ప దేవ నాయన మరి మేము ఎంతో ప్రభు ఆశతో ప్రభు నీ వాక్యం వింటకు సిద్ధపడి ఉండగా ప్రభ్వ నాయన నీ యొక్క పరిశుద్ధ ఆత్మ చేత ప్రభ్వ మరి ముఖ్యంగా పాస్టర్ ని నీ కొలతలి నీ పరిశుద్ధ ఆత్మ చేత నింపి నాయన ప్రభ్వ నీ వాక్యం ద్వారా మమ్మల్ని ఒక్కొక్కరిని ఒక్కొక్క పార్టిసిపెంట్ ని ప్రభ తృప్తి పరచండి నాయన మరి నీ వాక్యం వింటకు సిద్ధమైన చెవులను గ్రహించే మనసును మాకు దయచేసి నాయన నీ వాక్యం విని మర్చిపోక మేము నీ వాక్యాన్ని విని ధ్యానించి నీ వాక్యానుసారం జీవించుటకు మాకు సహాయం కృపన దయచేయండి ప్రభ మా ఆత్మలను నీ వాక్యం చేత తృప్తి పరచండి గొప్ప దేవ ఇంతవరకు ప్రతి వారం ప్రభ మీ సేవకుల ద్వారా నీ వాక్యంలో నుండి ప్రభ నూతనమైన సత్యంలో మర్మంలోను మాకు తెలియపరుస్తూ ప్రభ నువ్వు మహిమ పొందుతున్నందుకు నీకు స్తోత్రం నాయన మరి ఈ వార ఈ దినం కూడా ప్రభ ఈ బైబుల్ స్టడీలో కూడా నువ్వే ప్రభ నీ మహిమ పొందుమని ప్రార్థిస్తున్నాం తండ్రి ప్రభ ప్రతి ఒక్క పార్టిసిపెంట్ ని ప్రభ నువ్వు దీవించి ప్రభ నీ వాక్యం చేత తృప్తి పరచండి ఆయన మరి మేము విన్ వినడమే కాకుండా నీ వాక్యాన్ని ఇతరులతో పంచుకుంటకు మాకు సహాయం కృపన దయచేయమని ప్రతి ఒక్క పార్టిసిపెంట్ ని మరి ముఖ్యంగా పాస్టర్ ని నీ హస్తంలో కప్పు చెప్తూ ప్రభ ఈ బైబుల్ స్టడీని నీ హస్తంలో కప్పు చెప్తూ నువ్వే ఘనత మహిమ ప్రభావం కీర్తి తెచ్చుకోమని ఏసుదీవన్ నామం అడిగి ప్రార్థిస్తూ వేడుకుంటున్నాను తండ్రి ఆమెన్ Thank you so much, Sister Bernadine. Uh, today Welcome also, uh, yeah, thank you, Ma. Sister, today also, Sister Jyoti would not be there to assist us in scripture portion reading. So we will be taking the help of Sister Catherine. Uh, Sister Catherine will read out one scripture portion for us before we get started with our Bible study. <clears throat> Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Listen to what Sister Catherine uh, reads. Uh, listen very carefully. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable to God which is your reasonable sacrifice the reasonable service and do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God perfect will of God <clears throat> so remember this perfect will of god so uh, it is uh, paul is qualifying the word will of god with the word perfect <clears throat> listen to me very carefully paul is qualifying that phrase will of god with the word perfect that means is there something more to will of god is there something less than perfect when it comes to will of god see that is what chapter 32 of numbers is all about we are going to meditate upon it okay let us i'll also offer a small word of prayer and we'll proceed father once again we praise and thank thee for this wonderful forum o lord created by brother benoni richards and family at this time o lord every week we will remember the wondrous parents of brother benoni richards mr and mrs richards lord they had started the wednesday bible study many years back whereby many of us were blessed including this teacher <clears throat> today we commit each and every participant in this forum o lord into your hands they could have been elsewhere at this point of time but they have decided to spend this time in your presence because they love you and they want to grow scripturally and spiritually let every thought word and action of ours bring thee joy and glory in jesus holy precious name we pray Amen. Okay. 
we'll go to the slideshow. <laughs> Sister Catherine is very, very proactive. Mm -hmm. oh, even before I mentioned there is permissive will of God. <laughs> she has already put it. Praise the Lord. Anyway, uh, Sister, is there, are you doing some mind reading, Sister? <laughs> no, Pastor. I want to ask you that question. Okay. It's a so, that we all make. Uh, yeah, wonderful. We are we all, all united in one thing. spirit. Look at this, what I'm displaying and what Sister put up in the public chat. Amazing, is it not? Did I leak this uh, slideshow to Sister Catherine? <laughs> I did. And uh, as we meditate on uh, chapter 32, what the lesson which is to be learned here is the perfect will of God versus permissive will of God. Dear friends, I never tire of uh, repeating what is written in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11. All this has been written to serve as object lessons for us. Entire scripture has been written to serve as object lessons for us. In Telugu, the punch is more. It says, buddhi kalgutakai idanta kuda raya baden. Buddhi kalgutakai. So, <clears throat> dear friends, the perfect will of God, just now Sister Catherine read out to us from uh, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Giving our bodies as a living sacrifice unto God and not being conformed to the values of this world is the perfect will of God. Now, what does it mean? giving our bodies as a living sacrifice unto God. That is surrendering every area of our spiritual lives into his hands. Every area of our spiritual lives into his hands. Seen and unseen by the public. I repeat. Seen and unseen by the public. Committing, surrendering every area of our lives into his hands is what perfect will of God is all about. <clears throat> Dear friends, Actually, 613 laws were given by the Lord through Moses in the books Genesis to Deuteronomy. We are going to focus upon Deuteronomy also very shortly. 613 laws. The sum and substance of this 613 laws is the Lord wants to be the Lord of every area of your life. It has also been said by uh, one biblical scholar that when God comes into our life, he doesn't come into our life to be a resident, but he comes into our life to be a president. He wants to rule every area of our lives. And that is what giving every part of our lives into his hands is all about. Give your lives as a living sacrifice, says the Bible. Do not be conformed unto the values of this world. So in uh, connection with that, what are some spiritual examples of permissive will? where God, you know, <clears throat> had to uh, bear with the stubbornness of human beings, including some of his saints, and said, okay, then permit just to none. I'm permitting this. But it is not my perfect will, but I'm permitting this because you guys are exhibiting so much of urgency about matters which are not that much important. I have timing for everything. And perfect will of God is also waiting for his perfect timing. Dear friends, uh, before we come to chapter 32, let me bring before you uh, two examples of permissive will of God. We see surrogacy in Genesis chapter 16. Did, I'm asking you a question, give me an answer in the public chat. Did Abraham and Sarah wait for the perfect will of God to be accomplished in perfect time? No. No. <clears throat> God would definitely give them a son. But they exhibited unnecessary urgency. There comes Sarah with a proposal in Genesis chapter 16. Let us adopt surrogacy. Dear friends, I, I've stopped seeing movies now. Hmm? Uh, but when I was working as a petrol bunk inspector, there was a Sydney distributor who was also a petrol bunk owner. And you know, whenever the movies are released under his distributorship, he would give free tickets <laughs> to all his friends. And of course, I would not accept. 
but uh, you know uh, near that petrol bunk it is even there today in banjar isles road number 10 he would put up a poster of that movie also and i still remember way back 2001 i remember seeing the poster so chori chori chupke chupke <laughs> chori chori chupke chupke and that is also about surrogacy and uh, uh, living alone uh, surrogacy of modern times we go to genesis chapter 16 and we see unnecessary haste exhibited by abraham and sarah now again i'll ask you a question give me an answer in the public chat were the consequences good or bad were the consequences of going by the permissive will of god good or bad very simple till now bad says brother chatterjee we were now terror attacks whatever we see usually people behind the terror attacks is either a khan or a ibrahim or somebody else okay so till now bad oh, really beautifully put by brother chandu okay <clears throat> then again let's go back to the slide show we'll see one more example of permissive will of god <clears throat> um, there is uh, david god had instructed him brother go back to that uh, slide permissive will of god yeah uh, god had instructed him to be in the land of juda he says i am your protection i know saul is persecuting you i know saul is trying to kill you i am your refuge and fortress you don't have to seek shelter anywhere you be in the land of israel i'll ensure that saul will never be able to lay his hands on you turn with me a sister uh, Catherine will help us out. Second uh, Samuel chapter twenty-two. Sorry, First Samuel chapter twenty-two, verses four and five. First Samuel chapter twenty-two, verses four and five. So he brought them before the king of Moab, and they dwelt with him all the time that David was in the stronghold. Now the prophet Gad said to David, "Do not stay in the stronghold. Depart." and go to the land of juda so david departed and went into the forest of hereth do not be in a foreign land where was <laughs> david hiding amongst the moabites in the stronghold what is the connection between david and the moabites we'll have to read the book of ruth ruth was a moabitess and she uh, was married to boaz the children of boaz and uh, ruth uh, the son was obed obed son was jesse jesse son was david so david knew that the moabite king will have a soft corner for him and he goes and hides in moab <clears throat> and then the prophet says do not take refuge in a uh, in the foreign land i am i am there to protect you the lord speaks to the prophet and david obeys at that point of time he comes back into the land of juda but again look at his wavering mind look at his wavering mind uh, turn with me again sister um, catherine will help us out um, brother go back to the slide show uh, first samuel chapter 27 verses 1 and 2 once again david is trying to seek protection in a foreign land first samuel chapter 27 verses 1 and 2 and david said in his heart now i shall perish some day by the hand of saul there is nothing better for me than that i should speedily escape to the land of the philistines and saul will despair of me to seek me any more in any part of israel so i shall escape out of his hand look at that now david is thinking about taking protection amongst the philistines first he took protection amongst the moabites then amongst the philistines he settles eventually in a place called zikla i repeat he settles in a place called zikla was that a wise decision was that under god's perfect will was that under god's perfect will when the lord has assured him that he is going to be his refuge and fortress and once had brought him out of moab also where was the need for david to go and hide amongst the philistines See again, permissive will of God. God did not punish him for that, but David had to reap bitter consequences. Had he been in the land of Judah, 
hiding amongst the Israelites. This problem would not have come. What is that problem? Sister uh, Catherine, once again, 1 Samuel chapter 30, verses 1 and 2. 1 Samuel chapter 30, verses 1 to 4, sister. Now it happened when David and his men came to Ziglag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziglag, attacked Ziglag and burned it with fire, and had taken captive the women and those who were there, from small to great. They did not kill anyone but carried them away and went their way. So David and his men came to the city, and there it was, burned with fire, and their wives, their sons, and their daughters had been taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. Now look at David and his men. Because they hid in a place where the Lord did not want them to hide, when the men had gone away for some work, actually they were planning to go along with the Philistine army to fight against the Israelites, maybe David would not have really I know, participated in that war. And in that war, he may have turned against the Philistines, definitely, considering that Jonathan was there in the Israeli army and he would never lay his hand upon King Saul. Considering all that, <clears throat> he was away from Ziklag, the place where he had hidden. He had gone there. He, he was away for this particular reason. Yeah, the king of Philistine wanted him to come first, to participate in the war against the Israelites. Look at that. And uh, then again, the Philistine king says, no, no need for you, go back. And because David had placed his wife, his family in Ziklag, and because the other men also who were with David had their children and wives in Ziklag, there they were vulnerable to attack of the foreigners. If Israelites had been around David, would they have permitted this attack of the Amalekites? The Amalekites have come in David's absence. They burned the city. They kidnapped David and his wives. Uh, sorry, they kidnapped the wives of David and his children. Similarly, they kidnapped the wives and children of other men of David. And here David and his men are now crying. Okay, just to demonstrate. They cried till they could cry no more. Again, the Lord has mercy on David and his men. He helps them to get back their families. He helps them to get back their wives and children. That's a different story. But what I'm focusing upon is, if David had not been in Ziklag and had been in Israel with the Israelites around him, could this incident have taken place of Amalekites attacking Ziklag and burning it and taking away um, David and his family members as captives? No, no. Let us stay put in a place where God has placed us. As per his sovereign wisdom, there may be some inconveniences in that place. It can be your workplace. It can be your city where you're working. It can be your church, wherever it is. Seek the perfect will of God. Seek the perfect will of God. Yes, God may permit, but afterwards, the consequences can be bitter. Okay? So, dear friends, now let's go to the slideshow. I've laid the foundation between what is the difference between perfect will of God and permissive will of God. Okay? I've laid the foundation. And now let us go to the uh, actual chapter 32. I've used uh, all rhyming words, petition, suspicion, explanation, Allocation 1, Conviction 1, Instruction, Conviction 2, Allocation 2, then Division, Construction, and Subjugation. Okay? Now, <clears throat> when you read verses 1 to 5, the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and some part of the Manashe tribe, they come to Moses and say, if you permit, we would like to have the land on the eastern side of River Jordan. We don't want to cross River Jordan and occupy the eastern portion. We, want, we don't want to cross River Jordan and occupy the western portion. We want this eastern portion. We have conquered the land of King of Sihon. 
we have conquered the land of uh, uh, King uh, Bashan. King Sihan and King Bashan's land has been conquered by us. Please allow us to stay here. That is their petition. <laughs> and uh, uh, just, uh, brother, let's go to the next slide. Finally, when uh, um, the division of the land of Canaan took place, now look at this. Uh, River Jordan, brother, uh, Chandu point an arrow at a blue uh, line across, uh, uh, yeah, that is, that is River Jordan, okay? The eastern part, now look at that, tribe of Gad, a point an arrow at Gad, yeah, brother, Gad, Gad, brother, yeah, good, thank you. Then, Reuben, point an arrow at Reuben, yeah, and then also, bit of Manashe, Manashe, uh, the blue color on the, uh, brother, on the western side, Manashe, western side, Manashe, Megiddo, Manashe. Yeah, brother, top, yeah, yeah. That blue color, look at that. It is extending beyond River Jordan and coming on to the eastern side also. Brother, take an arrow, ah, there. It's going, the blue color, yeah, top of gap. Top of yellow color, yeah. Yeah, there, that, that blue color, yeah, that Manashe only, yeah. Same, that blue color has been allotted for us to depict the land given to the tribe of Manashe. But some of the leaders of the tribe of Manashe, they wanted land also on the eastern side of River Jordan. What was God's original plan? What was God's perfect will regarding this? Two and a half tribes, that is Reuben, Gad, and uh, Manashe. What was uh, his original plan? His original plan was they should be on the western side of River Jordan. Western side of River Jordan. Will not God give them adequate land? <laughs> Will not God take care of their needs properly? Will not God protect them by using the fellow Israelites? as a shield, as a cover for them. But no, they wanted land on this side. Now, let us look at the, uh, uh, their petition. Sister, uh, um, uh, Sister Catherine will read out to us, verses 1 to 5, and uh, if possible, Brother Chandu also will display uh, chapter 32. <clears throat> now, look at their petition. Now, the children of Reuben and the children of Gad had a very great multitude of livestock. And when they saw the land of Zazar and the land of Gilead, that indeed the region was a place for livestock, the children of Gad and the children of Reuben came and spoke to Moses, to Eliezer the priest, and to the leaders of the congregation, saying, Ataroth, Dibon, Zazar, Nimra, Heshbon, Eliale, Sheblam, Nebo, and beyond, the country which the Lord defeated before the congregation of Israel is a land for livestock, and your servants have livestock. Therefore they said, If we have found favor in your sight, let this land be given to your servants as a possession. Do not take us over the Jordan. Do not make us cross it. We have so much of livestock, we have so much of sheep, we have so much, so many goats, we have so many donkeys, we have so many camels. I want to ask you a question. <laughs> Is there not sufficient grass on the other side of River Jordan? <laughs> Give me an answer in the public chat. Huh? Will there not be sufficient grass for all this livestock to live happily on the western side of River Jordan? They have not seen it yet. <laughs> there will be, says Sister Catherine. Huh? They have not seen it yet. Just they are carried away by the <coughs> greenery on the eastern side of River Jordan and they have come to a conclusion. This is an ideal land for our livestock. Look at that. <laughs> this is called prejudice. Somebody said prejudice is a great time saver. It makes us to jump to conclusions without proper analysis of facts. Okay? Prejudice. <laughs> Uh, jumping to conclusions without ever, without even seeing that land, without even seeing that land. Uh, Chandrasekhar, everyone, remember Lot, yes? 
He saw greenery in uh, um, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah and uh, got carried away by the greenery of Sodom and Gomorrah. Brother Chandu, beautiful value addition. Okay, so <clears throat> dear friends, do not get carried away by what is visible in your eyes. Look at the overall plan of God. Look at the overall plan. Wherever the Lord has placed us, <clears throat> he is working for our benefit. Even though there may be some inconveniences, but look at this. They have not even seen the whole picture. They have not even seen that there's so much of grass on the western side of River Jordan also. And they are coming and petitioning Moses. And Moses has a suspicion. <laughs> Moses, you know, he says, you lazy fellows, huh? you don't want to accompany us to war. Hmm? You want to stay put on this side of the land where the other tribes are going and fighting uh, against the Canaanites on the other side. Brother, let's go back to the slide. Look at the Moses reaction. Look at Moses reaction. It is of suspicion. Uh, uh, let us look at that second subedy. Suspicion. Okay. <clears throat> and one more thing is, uh, here when Sister uh, um, Catherine was reading, uh, it says that in verses 1 to 5, the tribe leaders of Gad, Reuben, King. But in the map which I showed you, <laughs> the uh, land of the some land has been given to the tribe of Manashe also on the uh, eastern side of River Jordan. Okay, some land, the blue uh, portion is extending to the western side. Yeah, there, Brother Chandra is also pointing. So, uh, once again, let us, uh, th this is for all Bible students, okay? <laughs> uh, only uh, the leaders of tribe, uh, leaders of the tribe of Gad and Manasseh seem to have come and asked Moses, then how come land is given to the, uh, 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 a bit of land is also given to the tribe of Manasseh? How come? Uh, that question will come to us, is it not? <laughs> Immediately that question will come. Uh, when, uh, Brother, let's go back to the uh, this thing, scripture portion, which Sister uh, Catherine read, chapter 32. Uh, it says very clearly that uh, leaders of the tribe of Gad and, Manash and Reuben King, uh, Manasseh is not figuring there, but why land is given to, uh, so, some land there is also given to the tribe of Manasseh? Yeah. The Reubenites and Gadites, look at that. Reubenites, uh, I'm asking you a question now, is there any mention of the tribe of Manasseh here? <laughs> is there any mention? Only the Reubenites and Gadites are being mentioned there. Uh, there's no mention. So always let scripture interpret the scripture. Let scripture interpret the scripture. That this leaders of the tribe of Manasseh also came is vindicated and substantiated by what is written in verse 33. Okay? That is why Moses had to give. Go to verse 33. Yeah, there it is. Then Moses gave to the Gadites and Reubenites and half tribe of Manashe. Is it there? <laughs> it's very much there. <laughs> so that is why the tribe of Manashe also got a bit of the land on the eastern side of River Jordan. So you're all Bible teachers. Huh? <laughs> huh? Be perceptive. Be perceptive. Perceptive means always use the sight of your faith, brain, and uh, also of your heart. Heart is involved, brain is involved, and physical eyes are involved. That is being perceptive. Okay, So <clears throat> that is why a bit of land was also given to the tribe of Manashi. This was not perfect will of God. So Moses expresses his apprehensions. Let us read from verse 6 onwards. When they come with this petition, Moses is expressing his suspicion. He is expressing his apprehension. Uh, verse 6 onwards, sister. And Moses said to the children of Gad and to the children of Reuben, Shall your brethren go to war while you sit here? Now why will you discourage the heart of the children of Israel from going over into the land which the Lord has given them? Thus your fathers did. When I sent them away from Kadesh Banya to see the land, for when they went up to the valley of Eshkol and saw the land, they discouraged the heart of the children of Israel so that they did not go into the land which the Lord had given them. Continue, sister. So the Lord's anger was aroused on that day and he swore an oath saying, Surely 
none of the men who came up from egypt from 20 years old and above shall see the land of which i swore to abraham isaac and jacob because they have not wholly followed me except caleb the son of zephune the kenazite and joshua the son of nun for they have wholly followed the lord no ah, continue sister so moses, lord, let us go to the end of uh, what moses is telling uh, verse 13 is also the words of moses go up to verse 15 sister go up to verse 15 yeah so the lord's anger was aroused against israel and he made them wander in the wilderness 40 years until all the generation that had done evil in the sight of the lord was gone and look you have risen in your father's place a brood of sinful men to increase still more the fierce anger of the lord against israel for if you turn away from following him he will once again leave them in the wilderness and you will destroy all these people look at that this is the apprehension and suspicion of moses he is recalling the tragedy of numbers chapter 13 and 14 all of you remember the tragedy of numbers chapter 13 and 14 the tragedy of being so near and yet becoming so far they had almost reached the land of, uh, the borders of promised land and because of their disobedience they lost out that generation lost out on occupying the promised land he is recalling that when the Lord said, go and fight against the Canaanites, your fathers, they refused to go and fight against the Canaanites. And that whole generation got cursed, except Caleb and Joshua, all have died. He's uh, speaking to them in an accusing tone, Moses. And you're replicating what your fathers have done. You're saying we, we want to stay here. Uh, should the other tribes go and fight? When you are, you're all part of one covenant. It's a national covenant. God entered into a national covenant, whereas in New Testament, God enters into a covenant only with the local church. Listen to me very carefully. The difference between Old Testament covenant and New Testament covenant, every Christian should know. With the In the Old Testament covenant, the God has entered into a covenant with the entire land of Israel. It's a national covenant. Whereas in New Testament, God enters into a covenant with the local church. With the local church. <clears throat> uh, when one, when few people of Israel sin, the nation is taken to task. The nation is held accountable because he saved all of them from Egypt. All of Israel was saved from Egypt. With all of them, he entered into a covenant at Mount Sinai. Whereas when it comes to New Testament, <clears throat> he enters into a covenant with the local church. Okay, I'm asking you a question. There are seven churches in the book of Revelation, chapters 2 and 3, okay? I'm giving you the names of those churches or the cities where those churches were located. Ephesus, 2nd Smyrna, 3rd Pergamon, 4th Thyatira, 5th Sardis, 6th is Philadelphia, 7th is Laodicea. Now answer this question of mine. For the drawbacks and uh, the minus points of the church at Pergamon, Will the Lord, is the Lord taking the church at Thyatira to task <laughs> for the setbacks and for the backsliding? Yeah, no, no. He's holding the local church accountable. The local church, the pastor, the elders, and the congregation. He enters into a covenant with them. The whole local church, I'm repeating, the hierarchies, pastors, elders, deacons, and the church congregation. Okay, so he enters into a covenant with the local church. And again, I repeat, for the setbacks or the uh, minus points in the church at, say, Pergamum, the Lord is not taking the church at Thyatira to task. But when it comes to Israel, it's a national covenant. And when these fellows refuse to enter the promised land, the whole nation was uh, affected. They disgraced the whole nation and the whole nation came under God's curse. And uh, now Moses is expressing his apprehension and suspicion. And what is this? What is the explanation of these leaders? Let us read from verse 16 onwards. Brother, go back to the slideshow. Uh, sister will read. Uh, let us look at the subheading which, uh, which we have used. First is petition, second is suspicion, and third is their explanation. Verses 16 to 19. Sister will read. Then they came. 
Yeah. Then they came near to him and said, We will build sheep folds here for our livestock and cities for our little ones. But we ourselves will be armed, ready to go before the children of Israel until we have brought them to their place. And our little ones will dwell in the fortified cities because of the inhabitants of the land. We will not return to our homes until every one of the children of Israel has received his inheritance. For we will not inherit with them on the other side of the Jordan and beyond. Because our inheritance has fallen to us on this eastern side of the Jordan. Oh, this is their explanation. This is, they said, no, just give us permission to build... <coughs> fortifications for our children, for our wives. They are not going to accompany us to war. <clears throat> we will settle them in this land, but we will come with our swords and spears. We will accompany the other tribes. Where in the conquest of Canaan, the men of tribe of Gad, the men of tribe of uh, Reuben, and the men of tribe of Manasseh, all of us will be there in the battle, but give us time to build cities for our men, women and for our children. Let us fortify them and keep them safe and we will accompany. That is their explanation. That is their explanation. And Moses has to accept. That is the conviction. Now let's go back to the slideshow, brother. So uh, Moses says, okay, if that is the case. If you are giving your word that all of you will come in the battle for the conquest of Canaan, then okay. Then I will permit you to have this land on the eastern side of River Jordan. So let us read verses 20 to 24. Moses is making a conditional offer. He says, provided all of you guys, because I'm going to die. I will die on Mount Nebo. I'm not going to lead you into the war. Joshua will lead. I will not be alive at that point of time. But if you guys keep your word of accompanying the other tribes to war, then yes, you can have this land on the eastern side of River Jordan. Verses 20 to 24, sister. Then Moses said to them, If you do this thing, if you arm yourselves before the Lord for the war, and all your armed men cross over the Jordan before the Lord until he has driven out his enemies from before him, and the land is subdued before the Lord, then afterward you may return and be blameless before the Lord and before Israel. And this land shall be your possession before the Lord. But if you do not do so, then take note, you have sinned against the Lord and be sure your sin will find you out. Build cities for your little ones and folds for your sheep and do what has proceeded out of your mouth. Yeah, now you keep your word, says Moses. See, <clears throat> whenever there's a covenant with the country, Israel, all of them have to face the problem together. Similarly, when there is a covenant with the local church, all have to join hands if there is a problem, we'll have to solve it. So <clears throat> Moses says, <clears throat> you guys have to accompany for the war. You cannot sit idle at home. <clears throat> Let your women and children be in that fortified cities which you are building. But you guys come with the rest of the nine tribes and accompany them to war. Then only I will permit you to have this land on the eastern side of River Jordan. And they give the promise. Yes, yes, we will definitely do it. We will definitely do it. Conviction, they are bringing in Moses. Go back to the slideshow, brother. Go back to the slideshow. And they are bringing conviction uh, to Moses. And then verses 28 to 30 is the instruction. 28 to 30 is the instruction as uh, uh, Sister Catherine will read out for us. 28 to 30. So Moses gave command concerning them to Eliezer the priest, to Joshua the son of Nun, and to the chief fathers of the tribes of the children of Israel. Ah, and Moses said to them, if the, if the children of Gad and the children of Reuben cross over the Jordan with you, every man armed for battle before the Lord, and the land is subdued before you, then you shall give them the land of Gilead as a possession. But if they do not cross over armed with you, they shall have possessions among you in the land of Canaan. Okay. Thank you, sister. So, 
Why is Moses uh, giving uh, orders about them to Eliezer and Joshua? <laughs> Answer is obvious. He knows that he is not going to cross River Jordan. That is why he is he's bringing the future leaders into the picture. Eliezer is the son of Aaron. He is going to cross River Jordan. He is going to be there as a high priest when Israelites occupy the land of Canaan. Then the successor, successor of Moses is Joshua. He is going to lead them in the conquest of Canaan. He is giving them these instructions because Moses knows that he is not going to cross River, River Jordan and be part of the conquest of Canaan. Okay. Now, <clears throat> afterwards, when you see the other scripture portions, you will see that, uh, you know, Gadites and Reubenites, they build cities for their uh, women and their children. And then the tribe of Manashe, they attack uh, a place called Machir. Okay, let us read that also. Uh, then we'll come to the uh, Christian application and also we'll come to uh, the uh, consequences of this compromise. Okay, verse 33 onwards. Verse 33 onwards. So Moses gave to the children of Gad, to the children of Reuben, and to half the tribe of Manasseh, the son of Joseph, the kingdom of Sihon, king of the Amorites, and the kingdom of Og, king of Bashan, the land with its cities within the borders, the cities of the surrounding country. Thank you, sister. And then we can read that this uh, Gadites and the Reubenites, they went about constructing uh, the, uh, the cities, providing shelter for their women and children, so on and so forth. Uh, now, let us come to um, this one, um, verse 40. Verse 40, sister. So Moses gave Gilead to Manasseh, I'm sorry. Uh, so Moses gave Gilead to Makir, the son of Manasseh, and he dwelt in it. Yeah. So Thank you, sister. Thank you. Now, this uh, Makarites, the descendants of Manasseh, are getting that portion of land. Let's go to that map, brother. Now, let us look at the consequences, okay, of this uh, permissive will of God, okay? Uh, ah, yeah. uh, let's go to the next slide, brother. Uh, I'll show you one more map. Yeah. There it is. Uh, east, brother, point an arrow at East Manashe. Uh, top, top, below Dan, yeah, East Manashe. West Manashe is there, East Manashe is there. East Manashe. And there you will find uh, in the land given to East Manashe, Jabesh Gilead. Brother, come down, come down. Uh, after Ramoth Gilead is Jabesh Gilead. That's a small city by itself. Okay. What happens? What happens to Jabesh Gilead? Uh, just, uh, brother, come down. You'll find the Ammonites. Ammon, Ammon. Yeah, there it is. That is an uh, enemy country. That is an enemy country, Ammonites. Okay, then come further down, Moabites, near Reuben. For last, yeah, there. Down, down. Mo Moab, okay. These are enemies. These are enemies of the people of Israel. Now, I'll ask you a simple question. Give me an... Uh, answer in the public chat by way of yes or no. Had these tribes been on the western side of River Jordan, along with other tribes, will there not be protection by way of Israelites always being around them? Give me an answer, yes or no. Yes, 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 yes. There will be automatic protection. Because they are separated by River Jordan, you know what happened? Turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 11, sister, uh, uh, verses 1 to 3. Look at what happened. 1 Samuel chapter 11, verses 1 to 3, sister Catherine. Look, look at the consequences of permissive will of God. That is what I'm emphasizing again and again. When you compromise, when you don't go by the perfect will of God, when you, when you are... When you, will of God. This is what happens. Yeah. Then Nahash the Ammonite came up and encamped against Jabesh Gilead and all okay, the men of Yeah. And Jabesh all Gilead men, I already pointed out to you where the Jabesh Gilead is. Okay. Ah. And all the men of Jabesh said to Nahash make a covenant with us and we will serve you. 
and Nahash the Ammonite answered them, On this condition I will make a covenant with you, that I may put out all your right eyes and bring reproach on all Israel. Then, <coughs> the, elder, then the elders of Jabesh said to him, Hold off for seven days, that we may send messengers to all the territory of Israel, and then if there is no one to save us, we will come out to you. Okay, look at that. Because they are vulnerable to attacks of the enemies, what happened? The king of Ammon marched against them. There is no one to protect them. They do not have sufficient army to take care of themselves, to protect themselves. And they are telling the king of Ammon, we will surrender to you. We will surrender to you. And he is putting up a very harsh term for accepting their surrender. He says, I will accept your surrender on one condition. I will gouge out the right eye of every man in Jabesh Gilead. Why only right eye? Why not left eye? Why only right eye? Why not left eye? Most of us are right-handers, right? Most of us are right-handers. And when you go to war with a shield and a sword, what happens? Your shield is covering your left eye and you are seeing your enemy only with your right eye and fighting. Are you understanding now? Most of us are right-handers. And when you go to war, there is a shield on the left hand and there is a sword on the right hand. And when you are using the shield to protect yourself, the shield is cover, covering your left eye and you are able to see your enemy only with the right eye and you are able to fight with him. And once the right eye goes, you are incapable of fighting any war. Look at, first he is insulting Israel. Second, he is making all the men of Jabesh Gilead incapable of fighting in war. Now, would the, I'm asking you a question. Give me an yes or no. Would this problem have come if these tribes had been on the western side of River Jordan? No, says Sister Catherine. Yes, absolutely. Permissive will of God always leads to problems. Always seek his perfect will. Do not go for surrogacy. Abraham and Sarah paid a heavy price. David paid a price. God asked him to stay in Israel. He went and sought shelter in Ziklag amongst the Philistines. And here again, look at the problem which has come to Jabesh Gilead. Now problems come from physical angle and problems come from spiritual angle also. Problems come from spiritual angle also. What is the problem coming from spiritual angle? Because they are far away from the other Israelites separated by River Jordan, can they have proper fellowship with the fellow Israelites? I'm asking a question. They will not have been able to have proper fellowship. When there is no proper fellowship, your spiritual life suffer. You can be led astray. If most of the time you're spending amongst unbelievers and spending less time with the believers, you can get attracted by the moral values of unbelievers. You can get attracted by the rituals of unbelievers. Very much applicable to Christian life even today. Are you all with me? Now, what happened is a very sad story for, this, for these tribes. Turn with me. We'll close here. Judges chapter 10, verse 6. Sister... Uh, Catherine will read and Brother Chandu also will display. Judges chapter 10. There is a physical problem and there is a spiritual problem also. Judges chapter 10 verse 6. Sister, Catherine. Then the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord and served the Baals and the Ashtoreths, the gods of Syria, the gods the gods of Moab, the gods of the people of Ammon, and did not serve him. Look at that. Uh, brother, point an arrow at gods of Moab. Ah, yeah, there it is. 
They are serving gods of Moab. They are serving gods of the Ammonites. Brother point and arrow at gods of the Ammonites. Down, down, yeah. Gods of the Ammonites. Very close to them. Far away from the other Israelites. Far away from Jerusalem. Where is the temple? In Jerusalem. Where is the tabernacle? First, before the temple came. At Shiloh. You can access Shiloh from western side of River Jordan or from eastern side of River Jordan. You will have more fellowship with fellow Israelites if you are amongst the other nine tribes. You are far away from Shiloh. That is where the tabernacle was first. Then again the uh, tabernacle went out of existence and the temple came and the temple was, was in Jerusalem. And a river Jordan is coming in between. It is not easy for you to travel to Shiloh or to Jerusalem three times in a year and have fellowship with the Jews, your fellow Jews. Three times in a year, the Israelites are commanded by God to travel to a place which he selects to celebrate the three festivals. What are the three festivals for which the Israelites have to come to Shiloh or to Jerusalem? The festival of Passover, the festival of Pentecost, and the festival of Tabernacles. Turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 16, verses 16 and 17. And then I'll ask you a question and we'll close. Deuteronomy chapter 16, verses 16 and 17. Sister uh, Catherine also will read it out for us. Three times a year, all your males shall appear before the Lord, your God, in the place which he chooses. At the feast of the unleavened bread, at the feast of weeks, and at the feast of tabernacles. And they shall not appear before the Lord empty-handed. Three times a year, all your men must appear before the Lord at the place he will choose. It was first Shiloh, where the tabernacle was, and then it became Jerusalem. At the feast of unleavened bread means Passover, at the feast of weeks means Pentecost, and feast of tabernacles. Now my simple question to you, is it easier to go to Shiloh from western side of River Jordan or from the eastern side of River Jordan? You will have to cross River Jordan and go. Uh, give me an answer. Is it easier to go from the western side? You're losing out on fellowship with your fellow Jews. And what will happen? Slowly and steadily, you will backslide. You will get attracted by the rituals of the unbelievers. We just now read in Judges chapter 10, verse 6, they started worshipping gods of Ammonites. They started worshipping gods of the Moabites. How sad. Dear friends, all scripture, I'm closing here, all scripture has been given to serve as an object lesson for us. Buddhi kalugutakai idanta kuda rayabade. Sometimes we neglect the perfect will of God and we compromise. Are permissive will? They would allow jesthundu. Allow jesthundu raayana kuda chala dukkam to allow jesthundu. Who suffered? Abraham and Sarah. Who suffered? David. Who suffered? The tribes of Reuben, Gag, and bit of Manashi. Any Bible study is complete only when we take these three steps. The three steps are, first is observation. What the scripture is describing. Second is interpretation. Understanding its meaning. And third is application. Application is you apply it to your day-to-day -day Christian life. If you are away from fellowship, from where the Lord has placed you in your local church, the covenant is always with the local church. Dear friends, some of the spiritual blessings you can lose out on. Okay, so I will close here. <clears throat> um, I'll request Brother ben to lead us in closing prayer. Brother ben Hur is a wonderful servant of the Lord, always very hospitable. Recently, me and Benoni Richards' brother visited his home and he showered his hospitality and love upon us. Brother ben uh, lead us in closing prayer. Okay, let's look, <laughs> yeah. let's look to the Lord in prayer. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Thank you, Pastor, for the comments, what you have given me. <laughs> because it's all in, a, in a honor for us. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's look to the Lord in prayer. Our most gracious, loving and living Heavenly Father, thank you, Jesus, for giving us this wonderful opportunity to praise Thee, to worship Thee, to glorify Thee. 
every day is a wonderful day every day is a promised day and every day is a miracle day for us god oh god we we have to claim all the three things oh god heavenly father from you oh god heavenly father the wonderful words from what pastor has given oh god let it be in our heart mind and soul oh god heavenly father take charge of our lives oh god mold us and make us to practice it in our life oh god when we practice it we are a true christian so god heavenly father yes jesus yes jesus take care of us and guide us thank you jesus for giving us this wonderful lessons from the pastor oh god bless him abundantly and his wife oh god heavenly father he is teaching for many people oh god heavenly father let everyone may become a warrior for christ to god heavenly father let his let his words may not go void oh god how much pain he is taking god help him out in them strengthen him and guide him and be with him bless all the people who are participating in this part bless each and every family oh god heavenly father in jesus name i pray amen let us all meet.